How many people in this world dare to love anything enough that isn't their own child to be willing to give their life? touch the magic and beauty of that place that transformed people's lives. There was a rock about three feet high and underneath it was just enough space that my body could scrunch down and fit in. What if I just made a stake in the ground and sort of said, hey, you guys, you're going to flood nine million years worth of evolution? Why not take one more creature with you? Mark allowed that place to have its way with him. He allowed that place to carve him out on the inside, like to fall in love so completely that it was not okay for him to lose that place. He was not okay for that place to just be wiped away. Slowly the beauty of the place just kept absorbing me more and more, even sort of unbeknownst to me. So it grew me, it grew all of us, and it grew even those who didn't know what they were coming for. In my teens, as an awkward, gangly teen, I uh, discovered caves, and the caves were above the only limestone canyon in the river, so I discovered the Stanislaw River, and uh, that began this long love affair with this incredibly stunning place. Before long, I was a river guide, and then a friend had the idea of taking inner city kids down, so we started taking inner city kids down and disabled. All of that was with the backdrop that this dam was gonna be flooding this place. Mark is deeply embedded in place. He really began his professional career as a river guide that often, in his case, gravitates toward rivers. One of those was the Stanislaus, and there was uh, the desire to put together and fill up the new Maloney's Dam, and, and Mark uh, very much opposed that. As I very slowly got engaged in the politics of learning, well, wait a second, you mean this is an old, outdated idea? It doesn't make economic sense anymore. So before long, we were doing um, a statewide ballot measure. We did statewide legislation. We did congressional legislation and everything else in between. And we just kept losing and losing. Northeast of San Francisco near Sonora, a young man is holding back an entire river by holding himself hostage. He's going against a force that could be even more formidable than nature, the federal government and he vows to stay where he is until he's sure he's won. My life is, is insignificant compared to all the life in this canyon, and uh, I knew a long time ago that I wanted to help make that statement. I was eight years old when Mark was chaining himself to that rock. Needless to say, I wasn't around to see the impact. I know that he was the most wanted man in America for that week. It was viewed as this incredibly newsworthy event. It got national attention on all of the networks. California Stanislaus River. He was protesting an Army Corps of Engineers plan to raise the water level. Well, he unchained himself today after seeing a written agreement that the governor's office will monitor the water level. For that week, he will have woken people up to questioning, you know, like, we just take dams for granted, but actually here's one man willing to give his life to say, you know what, you can't take any river for granted. You know, what happens to this world when you dam all its arteries? My actions delayed things for a little while and we lost in a big, big way.
As we look down, you can see the reservoir's bathtub ring, the dead zone where nothing can live because the water fluctuates and all the topsoils pulled away. And below that, you see the finger of the reservoir's um, deadened waters. And what used to be under that was the miracle of Rose Creek, this remarkable little stream that went over the, um, the bedrock. It had pools and sliding rocks. You know, in the spring, it was just lined with colored wildflowers of all different shapes and sizes, and uh, a reservoir transformed it into dead zone. When he lost his river, first of all, he had to internalize the belief that he had failed so completely that it broke him into a million pieces. What it did was just focus national attention on this in a way that just hadn't existed before. That somebody was actually prepared to give his life to stop this from happening. And uh, out of that came uh, not only Friends of the River, the organization that he founded, but a whole bunch of other river activists. Three years later, the Tuolumne River got saved. So the politicians who wouldn't help us out saving the Stanislaw, now we're ready to help the Tuolumne. And three years later, three rivers got saved, the Kings, Kern, and Merced. And this time, politicians, instead of what they had said to us in the early days, we'll help you conserve the river and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dam it for you. And we're going, no. Well, now politicians were actually competing to get more miles of these rivers protected. So I could feel the arc that while we had lost, we had contributed to this growing awareness of rivers. I, I think that community organizing of the sort that, if you will, Barack Obama did, and he was a really young man, uh, but that a great many of us have chosen to do for our entire lives is of critical importance in, in terms of keeping a planet that we can be somewhat proud of passing on to our kids. Each one of us is such a unique antenna for what's important. And we each have our own unique skills. So it's great to find an organization and support them to do the work they're doing. And how do each of us find what's mine to do also now at this point, at this point in this great transition. It requires organizing. It requires enough passion, enough belief to just to keep having a go. You know, Mark never gave up. He just kept going and kept going and kept going and he lost his river. But then he was like, okay, I've lost one river. Okay, now it's international rivers. Now it's all the rivers of the world. You know, and beyond that, okay, now it's Earth Day. Now it's the planet. What's the more that can come up in you as you get more engaged and more educated and more passionate and more undone by your love of this natural world? There's more. So bring it. Overall, this lesson that I got from the river is we're one and the same. We're connected. It, by trying to protect that place, I was helping protect me. And this interconnectedness we have, you know, the person who runs out in front of the freeway to rescue a child right in front of cars, it's like, what are they thinking? They, they could have killed themselves, but they were trying to rescue a life. So in our instincts, we know we're connected much more. We're connected to life and we have inherited a world that, oh, nature's out there, oh yeah, let's protect nature as a theoretical concept. And yet as we spend more time breathing, as we spend more time outside, we connect with something much more.